Can you say what self is within the IFS model? Yeah, so self is, is now become the centerpiece of the model. Uh, and that's, I just stumbled onto that. There, there are a lot of models that talk about subpersonalities, actually. Um, but because of my family therapy background, when I would try to have dialogues between my client and these parts, I started to notice that other parts would interfere. And as I got them to separate, because when you're working with the family, you want to have just two people talk to each other. And if a third starts to interfere, you ask them to step out. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe the same operation in this interfere family. And I would ask them to get these other parts, these interfering ones, to give us some space. And when I would do that, it was like a new person would pop out of nowhere and would be calm and confident and would be curious about the part that they were talking to and the part would sort of disarm mm -hmm. and would be much more willing to talk about itself and uh, to be vulnerable actually. Mm -hmm. And when I would ask people about who is that, they would say, I'd say, what part is that? They'd say, that's not a part like these others, that's mm -hmm. me. That's myself. So we came to call that the capital S, self, to distinguish it from the common usage of the word self, which means the whole person. And as I tried it with other clients, it was like the same person would pop out. And uh, always undamaged kind of essence that, in addition to being curious, confident, and calm, often would have compassion just immediately for the part they were working with, for the person they were talking to, would have a lot of courage. So we have what we call the eight C words that characterize self. Courage, creativity, clarity. So the part would change its image and see it much more for what it is, actually. And connectedness. There's a, a kind of innate desire in self to connect to self in parts and people. And a sense of being much more connected than isolated. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that was remarkable when I started to see that in a couple of clients that I thought, wow, they must have had really good parenting because mm -hmm. how else could they have this kind of ego strength? And I would comb their histories to find the person that they got it from because I was trained in attachment theory mm -hmm. to believe that to have any of that, you had to have ha gotten it from a, another person, from an outside relationship. And many of these clients and there was no person in their life they possibly could have gotten that from. So I really started to have to shift at some point to believe that this is just inherent in us, mm. that it's sort of our birthright, and that uh, in addition to those qualities, there's a kind of wisdom about how to heal internally and externally. So self-heals is a bumper sticker someday I'm going to print, because mm -hmm. it, it's really true. Mm -hmm. So often as we help clients access that state and then begin to relate to these parts, they sort of take over the session and I just get out of the way because they really do know how to heal themselves. And that's a tough sell. Both the idea that we're multiple and the idea that this is in there undamaged and knows how to heal uh, isn't uh, syntonic with our culture at all. So it's been a kind of uphill battle to convince people 